Hello, hello, Dr. Wu, are you ready? Yeah. Okay, perfect. So uh, I propose that we start this webinar. So welcome everybody to this webinar and thanks for coming search large number. So we're happy to host the first webinar of the OncoDNA webinar series uh, with the exceptional presence of Dr. Wu from Vietnam. So my name is Mark and first, uh, let me give you a short introduction about OncoDNA. Okay, so OncoDNA, the healthcare technology comp company making precision medicine a reality, is a company based off in Belgium uh, with more than 50 people uh, dedicated to bring tomorrow's high-end cancer precision medicine into today's oncology uh, routine. So based on the multi-platform approach, and screening for various types of biomarkers, including DNA, RNA, and proteins, OncoDNA is bringing precision medicine uh, to the next level uh, with a combination of molecular diagnostics and cancer data uh, management. So oncologists can always prescribe the right treatment to the right patient and at the right time. So to fill that purpose, OncoDNA has successfully launched uh, five solutions to the market uh, each having a well-defined scope and based on strong scientific rationale. We're able to work from cell biopsy, liquid biopsy, and even uh, NGS raw data to tackle the current challenge in oncology. So we are striving on a daily basis to make precision medicine a reality. Okay, so on to today's uh, main guest, uh, guest, which is Dr. Wu. So Dr. Wu, um, is a pulmonologist uh, specialized in oncology. He's based in Ho Chi Minh City and has completed both medical degree and a master of medical science degree at the University of uh, Medicine and Pharmacy, so the famous UMP of Ho Chi Minh City. Today, Dr. Wu is working at the biggest uh, general hospital down south in Ho Chi Minh City, which is the Choi Rai Hospital. And he is also the secretary of Ho Chi Minh City Respiratory Society. He published in more than 40 papers and uh, local and international peer reviewed journals. Okay, so before jumping into today's webinar, which is about immunotherapy implication in lung cancer, um, should you have any questions during the webinar, feel free to type your question in the questions tab. Okay, only those questions will be addressed by Dr. Wu at the end of the webinar. Okay, so Dr. Wu, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mark. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, firstly, I would like to thank Mark for his uh, nice uh, introduction. Uh, and I would like to thank on coordinator uh, for giving me the opportunity to present you the topic immunotherapy is non small cell lung cancer for this topic i will briefly introduce uh, lung cancer and then its treatment and the role of immunotherapy and how to predict immunotherapy response As you know, lung cancer is the leading cause of cancer deaths worldwide. Every year, lung cancer causes more than 1.6 million deaths, more than breast, colon, and prostate cancers combined. Smoking is responsible for 7 million deaths worldwide, and 6 million uh, of deaths are caused by direct tobacco use, uh, and another one million is caused by secondhand smoke uh, exposure. Smoking is responsible for over 18% of lung cancer cases. In my country, 15%, 50 percent of male smokes and only 1% of women smokes. That's why lung cancer is the listing cause of death in men, but uh, uh, in women, uh, lung cancer is only the second cause of death of cancer death in women. 
um, in, in, lung, in lung cancer or small cell lung cancer comprise of 15 percent 10 to 15 percent of lung cancer but uh, the mo most of lung cancer patients will have non small cell lung cancer and among them uh, squamous cell carcinoma and underdog carcinoma are the two most common type uh, only biopsy can uh, uh, tell us which patient have adenocarcinoma, which patient have uh, squamous cell carcinoma. But people usually say that if you have a central tumor, it could be um, squamous cell carcinoma. Uh, otherwise, if you have a peripheral tumor, it could be adenocarcinoma. Uh, the patient usually come with a lot of uh, different um, presenting symptoms and signs, such as worsening cough or chest pain, malaise, waist load, dyspnea, hemoptysis, and harshness. Uh, but all these symptoms cannot tell us uh, what type of lung cancer the patient have. Uh, the most common sign of metastasis are of lung cancer are the lungs, the adrenal gland, and the brain. Um, 25 to 44 percent of patients who have brain metastasis will have very poor prognosis. According to Shear Cancer Statistics Review, uh, patient usually come with 57% uh, of patients will come with metastatic disease. And in this patient, the survival is very poor. Less than 5% of these patients will alive at five years. On our squamous cell carcinoma also have a lot of mutations. This mutation has not been droppable yet. Uh, otherwise, with adenal carcinoma, we will we will look for EGFR, AOK, BRAF, ROS1, HER2. Uh, these these are the mutation that we can droppable. On down, you see here uh, the rate of EGFR mutation in in small cell lung cancer is 15 percent, um, but uh, the rate uh, varies among uh, uh, parts of the world. In Europe and USA, um, EGFR mutation comprises of uh, 10 to 15 percent of patients, but in Asia. Uh, EGFR mutation could be 50 to 70 percent of patients. Uh, in the past, uh, about 30 to 20 years ago, every time the patient with non-small cell lung cancer came, we all give them uh, chemotherapy. But now, uh, we know that uh, we can test the tumor, we can identify the mutation, uh, and uh, National Comprehensive Cancer Network recommend that we uh, do all the tests for our patient. In green, uh, we mark uh, the recommended testing for lung cancer patient, and you will see Almost of uh, lung cancer patients should be tested for molecular uh, biomarker. Um, when the patient have uh, this mutation, uh, we can treat them with uh, molecular uh, therapy, Mo molecular targeted therapy. Uh, in Asia, um, the EGFR mutation is the most common one. And if we can identify either deletion of SN19 or 
L85 8R, uh, we can use either afatinib, alertinib, gefitinib, or ursimetinib first line. Um, uh, among the recommended uh, molecular mutation, such as ECFR, AOK, RUS1, BRAF, uh, there are emerging biomarkers. Uh, we will have MED, we have RET, rearrangement, and HER2 mutation. Mm. You can see here in the this uh, um, in this article of Chris in Chama two thousand fourteen. Uh, uh, every time the patient have targeted the therapy for the oncogenic driver, the survival survival improves significantly. When the patient have no driver mutation or they have driver mutation, but they cannot have targeted therapy, and the, uh, the prognosis will be worse. Um, unfortunately, there are patients with stage 4 non small cell lung cancer who don't, do not have actionable mutations. And this group of patients require distinct recommendation. A second option apart from targeted therapy is immunotherapy, for which pd one testing is needed. Okay, what about immunotherapy? The histor history of cancer immunotherapy dated uh, more than 100 years ago with Dr. Coley who uses toxin to treat sarcoma. The evolution of cancer immunotherapy varies a lot, but uh, in recent year, in uh, two or three or five years um, recently, uh, we can see that pembrolizumab and nivolumab are the two pd one inhibitor, which is approved in non small cell lung cancer. Um, how does immunotherapy work? Let's start explaining briefly how cancer is able to escape the natural anti-tumor immune response. Due to the fact that the tumor cells carry many mutations. They more normally oppress alter protein on their surface, which are recognized by the immune system, in this case, uh, T cell. Upon protein recognition, tumor cells start oppressing pd one rep represented here in green, which bind to PD-1 located on the surface of T cell leading to T cell inhibition. So, what immunotherapy drugs do is to block immune in inhibitory pathway binding to either PD-1 or PD-1 so that they cannot interact. And that's why the immune cell stay active. There are five different antibodies that have been FDA approved. You all know that nivolumab and pembrolizumab targeting PD-1 uh, are approved for non small cell lung cancer, and adesolizumab and dovalumab, avelumab targeting PD-1. Uh, in the last uh, Three years, uh, there are several checkpoint inhibitors approved for non small cell lung cancer treatment. Uh, we can see here nivolumab, pembrolizumab, atelolizumab, all approved for second line treatment for non small cell lung cancer. And for first line, uh, we can use pembrolizumab in patients with more than 15% of. PD-01 and 
Otherwise, uh, we can use uh, pembrolizumab with chemotherapy for patient without with or without PD-01. Um, to test biomarker is an uh, important step uh, to identify the right patient for the right treatment. For prembolizumab, uh, the response rate increased significantly with the proportion score of PD-1 expression. Um, but for uh, the higher proportion proportion score of 75 to 100%, only 40% uh, of patients will have respond. So uh, on the pembrolizumab, uh, also pd one is a good marker for pembrolizumab, but uh, it, not, it cannot predict what patient will respond, what patient will not. And, um, and in this uh, study, you can see that uh, immunotherapy has proven to be successful in non-small cell lung cancer, but uh, it has some limitation. Uh, pd one testing for pd one expression is not an optimal predictor of immunotherapy response. Recently, FDA has approved uh, another kind of uh, biomarker, which we call here MSI high. MSI means microsatellite instability. This is the first time that FDA approved uh, a treatment for a biomarker. Every time you have uh, um, MSI high, on down you have uh, uh, colorectal cancer or you have gastric cancer, uh, you will have, uh, you can treat with uh, chemo, um, with immunotherapy, in this case, pembrolizumab. We have here five studies uh, with more than um, 149 patients and um, a significant percent of patients um, respond to uh, pembrolizumab treatment. Uh, and another way to uh, predict the resp response of immunotherapy is to combine the uh, biomarker. Uh, in this study, uh, if we combine uh, tumor mutation burden with pd one we can identify the purple group, the group with high TMB and PTL1 uh, bigger than 50%, the group with uh, highest response to nivolumab. So, um, what about the, uh, the, the actual situation of uh, predicting immunotherapy response? Um, OncoDNA has developed a test that combines five independent markers for predicting patient response to immo immune checkpoint inhibitors. Um, uh, we can have here a pd one protein expression, tumor mutation burden, CD8 T cell infiltration, microsatellite instability, gene alteration lead due to resistance or sensitivity of uh, immunotherapy. Uh, among them, uh, as I told you, uh, pd one and microsatellite instability were FDA approved. pd one protein expression was the first FDA approved biomarker for predicting response to checkpoint inhibitors. Uh, and as I told you before, uh, an emerging um, biomarker is tumor mutation burden. Uh, 
um, actually uh, we can see that uh, not uh, one biomarker can predict um, all the patient with uh, um, who respond to 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 immunotherapy. That's why we should uh, uh, do all the five tests to identify which patient can have a uh, good response to immunotherapy. To me, uh, no biomarker alone is enough to predict treatment response. Uh, PDL1 and CD8 expression is very dynamic and it can be influenced by different factors. On our MSI high is a very good the biomarker, the frequency is not uh, high. It is uh, low in, uh, um, in a lot of uh, kind of lung of tumor. And uh, the presence of resistant mutation should be taken into account too. Um, how does this personalized immunogram translate into clinical practice? I will show you a real case. Uh, in a Thai patient, what, what we test uh, recently, who have a uh, non-small cell lung cancer of stage four, uh, the immunogram show high potential response to immunotherapy. Why? On down, he have a pd one negative, uh, meaning that uh, less than 5% of uh, membrane standing for pd one uh, we did, did not observe any tumor mutation burn too, uh, but uh, in this patient, we can identify a high infiltration of CD8 T cell and especially a high MSI. Uh, it has been reported that he present uh, just population of CD8 lymphocyte uh, and this sign is associated with better clinical outcome for immunotherapy. Uh, Pembrolizumab is approved for MSI high uh, and in patients with uh, metastatic disease. Therefore, based on the result, uh, pd one or pd one inhibitor are strongly associated with potential clinical benefits for this patient. So uh, that's all that uh, I want to present to you uh, about lung cancer, about the uh, treatment. Uh, apart from chemotherapy, we have targeted therapy and immunotherapy and um, pd one and um, MS high, MSI high are these uh, good biomarker, but we should combine a lot of biomarker, uh, such as uh, uh, CD8, uh, T cell, and uh, the gene, uh, the other gene, and uh, for, for predict the response to immunotherapy. Thank you for your attention. Uh, if you have any question, please feel free to ask uh, the question. Okay, so thank you very much, uh, Dr. Wu, for this uh, insightful presentation. Uh, we will now proceed to the Q&A session. So uh, should you have any questions, feel free to type them in in the questions tab. Uh, we do have a few here. Um, one is, uh, so what would be, a uh, doctor, the, for you, the immunotherapy landscape in Vietnam? So is uh, immunotherapy commonly used or we are not there yet? Um, in Vietnam, uh, we, uh, we recently have pembrolizumab map uh, from last year, from November 2017. And uh, we are eager to use this uh, uh, eye of treatment because uh, we have a lot of uh, data that shows that uh, pembrolizumab map can uh, 
improve the survival of the patient. So every time the patient have PD-1 bigger than 50%, we use pembrolizumab alone. Uh, otherwise, we combine pembrolizumab with chemotherapy for patient with PD-1 less than 50%. Okay, so we do have several questions for you, doctor. Um, a question from Anne Anguian, uh, which is the following. All the drugs have already existed in Vietnam for patients, haven't they? So uh, I would, I understand uh, basically he will be asking what is the drug availability in Vietnam? So maybe uh, yeah. the, you know chemotherapies, targeted therapies, and immunotherapies. Uh, what will be used most commonly, and what about the other types of drugs you, you will be using if chemotherapy, chemotherapy is not responding? Yeah, for for non-small cell lung cancer, uh, we have been used uh, chemotherapy for uh, more than thirty years. That's why uh, we. For, for chemotherapy, uh, we have only available drugs. Uh, but uh, in in Vietnam, for targeted therapy, we use uh, EGFR PKI treatment only. We have uh, afatinib, eflotinib, gefitinib, and uh, osimertinib. Uh, but for uh, for immunotherapy, we have only pembrolizumab. Uh, the value can be used in Vietnam, but uh, in clinical trials only. Mm -hmm. Okay, got, got it. So this is more of a personal question, but um, how do you see the landscape of treatments uh, evolve in the next uh, few years? Uh, do you foresee uh, the arrival of new um, of new uh, targeted treatments because as uh, as of now it seems that you you're only using EGFR TKI inhibitors. Uh, yeah, um, yes, uh, we uh, we uh, from day to day uh, we uh, we test more and more uh, the other biomarker as AOK. First one, uh, in Vietnam, uh, we can test uh, ALK and uh, first one and PDF. And as we have the recommended treatment by uh, the NCCN and ASCO and ESMO, uh, we will uh, use the uh, um, ALK TKI for the patient with, which have uh, ALK strong location. Uh, indeed, I have uh, two patients with uh, AOK translocation, and I am put them on uh, 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 So, uh, in the future, we, we will have to test more and more patients to look for what kind of tumor they have and give them the right treatment. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So uh, I've got a couple of questions flow uh, coming in for you, doctors. So the next one will be for uh, from uh, Dr. Ricardo Sanchez uh, from Spain. Uh, what about TMB test testing for predicting response to immunotherapy? Yeah. <clears throat> in in uh, in the last two years, we see that. Uh, there are several studies, uh, and one study I have presented uh, uh, earlier uh, that says that uh, nivolumab can uh, be used in patients with high tumor mutation burden. Uh, that's why uh, Every time the patient do not have PD-1 high, uh, we can look for tumor mutation burden. Actually, it is not recommended uh, by the guideline by, uh, by, the, by the FDA, but uh, it is an emerging uh, biomarker, and uh, there's a lot of study uh, using uh, the this biomarker, uh, and we will have the result uh, in the future. Okay, so not there yet for TMB, but maybe in the future. Okay. Yeah. 
Okay. Um, uh, so a question for Anne Anguyen. Uh, as I follow the presentation, I knew that some drugs need accom accompanying with molecular testing, some not. Why? So, yeah, so maybe I can provide some input for this question. Um, so the, the approach for for for, for DNA is really to test out, uh, you know, at, at several levels, which would be DNA, RNA, and proteins. And from each of those levels, actually, you can come up with clinical insight. Um, so some treat so main if the treatments uh, from the scientific literature is said to having a target that can be highlighted by molecular testing, actually we will highlight those uh, treatments also in the reports. Uh, and we're addressing the FDA uh, and EMA approved treatments uh, in our reports. So um, I believe that most of uh, chemos targeted and chemotherapies will be addressed uh, by all molecular profiling. If that doesn't answer the question, feel free to type in uh, for some uh, additional uh, clarifications. Okay, yeah, so. I agree with Mark that uh, in the future, uh, we, uh, we will use uh, molecular testing to identify the right patient for the right drugs. Actually, uh, with BRAF, we can use Tamethanib and uh, Dragrafenib. Uh, with AOK, we can use uh, Electinib or Seritinib. So uh, every time we test, uh, we will have the right treatment. But uh, as you know, uh, bevacizumab can uh, be used in uh, um, adenocarcinoma patients without testing. Uh, yeah, but uh, in the future, I think testing is very important to identify the right patient. Yeah. yeah. And, and actually, in this presentation, we mentioned a lot about uh, targeted therapies and uh, uh, immunotherapies, but uh, chemotherapy is an important class of drugs that can be actually highlighted. Um, I mean, the, with the IHC, so with, with the immunohistochemistry, they have a predictive value for chemotherapies as well. So we're really covering chemo uh, yeah, targeted and immuno uh, in a single test. Okay, so I do have a, the next question is from Catherine. Um, how about the accessibility of patients to clinical trials? I am a French citizen, and in this country, doctors tell me that the accessibility of patients to national clinical trials is not that good. Hopefully, hopefully it will improve. Thank you for this great and informative webinar. Thank you, Catherine, for your questions. Yeah, uh, the accessibility to, for patients to clinical trial is different among countries, among cities, uh, and among hospitals. Uh, in Vietnam, uh, uh, only the uh, big city like uh, the capital of Hanoi and the Ho Chi Minh City, uh, uh, that uh, we have a lot of clinical trial, but uh, in the provinces, hospital, uh, Mostly, we don't have clinical trial. That's why the, it is, uh, the asset, accessibility to clinical trials is very slow. Uh, anyway, I think that uh, your, your doctor uh, who, who takes care of you will have a lot of information about where the clinical trial takes place and he can introduce you to, to the, decide that the that the, the clinical trial takes place. So you, you can uh, do the test, and uh, if you have the new uh, the newer um, mutation, uh, we can uh, see uh, that the, the clinical trial can be conducted in somewhere in the world. Understand. Um, so uh, let's move on to the next question. Uh, it's from Mirai. Uh, sorry if I'm spelling that wrong. Um, so does the test developed by OncoDNA provide a score for immunotherapy outcome prediction? And would you consider a patient with a low score not to receive immunotherapy treatment or would you still include 
such patients? Um, yeah, interesting question, definitely. So, you know, uh, we strongly do not recommend to go against the guidelines. I mean, so as you know, for example, doctor stated that uh, in non-small cell lung cancer, actually for in first line of treatment, you can prescribe immunotherapy if the patient is PDL1 high, which means higher than 50% of expression. Um, in this case, of course, if the patient is PDL1 uh, high, you sh you should go for immunotherapy if other uh, options have been used, or if you want to go in first line. Um, on the other hand, all tests can actually, you know, there is there is now a swift in paradigm which is highlighting the combination of those tests, and this is what we do now. So, for for those patients, as you mentioned, let's say they are PDL1 uh, low, if all tests um, uh, have, if some of the other tests are positive, we will still recommend, uh, we still give the suggestion, let's say to doctors, that immunotherapy might be a good, uh, might be a good fit for that patient. But uh, but again, the guidelines, uh, following the guidelines are of course uh, important. Okay. Yeah, I agree with Mark. Yeah. Thank you. Great. Uh, so, for we do have a, sl uh, a question about slide uh, 22. Uh, may I ask you to move back to slide 22? Okay. So, uh, the question would be um, why nivolumab uh, indication for second line without evaluate PDL1 expression? One. Uh, why? Uh, Twenty-two doctors. Yeah. Uh, um, when uh, when the uh, when doctors do um, the uh, nivo map clinical trial, uh, they think that the uh, nivo map can be uh, used in uh, either PDL one or negative or PDL one positive, and they. Uh, they um they do the clinical trial time like that um, after first night chemotherapy uh they divide the patient into two groups uh, uh randomizedly uh either docetaxel or nivolumab and uh, the result shows that uh on that you do not test uh, pd1 um Use the use of nivolumab uh, after in uh, in second line treatment will be better than uh, osetacil. Uh, that's why uh, we don't have to test uh, uh, PDO one for nivolumab. But uh, as I told you, or uh, um, nivolumab uh, only. Have a good response in a small percentage of patient. So if we uh, can do other things, such as tumor mutation burden, we can identify the exact uh, patient who respond to nivolumab. Okay, understand. And um, to add up on that, I would say that um, you know PDL1 is one test, but it has shown some. Um, it's not. It's actually not that rel reliable as a biomarker uh, alone to test the prediction to uh, immunotherapy. So um, that's why the you know the the, sh the swift of paradigm would be really combining uh, those uh, PD the PDL one expression with some other molecular tests, and they could explain also uh, the response uh, to nivolumab, even though PDL one uh, was uh, negative or really low expression. Okay, uh, I still have some for you, doctors. Uh, do you have uh, any plan to clinical trial for CAR T cell therapy in Vietnam? Yeah, it's a very interesting it's, it's, yeah, it's uh, question. Yeah, it's a new topic. Yeah, yeah. actually, uh, CAR T cell is indicated in lymphoma, or we can call uh, uh, hepato. Uh, in in um, 
melanoma and other type of uh, cancer only, not in lung cancer or, or other solid uh, tumor. So uh, we, we hope that we can develop a CAR T cell in Vietnam, but uh, actually I, I think uh, it's not available in the world. It's uh, available only in the US. Yeah, and it's very expensive. And it's very, very expensive. Um, so, um, okay. So th there is another question for Anne Nguyen. Uh, so I just want to know that the molecular testing prior targeted cancer treatment in your lab belong to in-house testing of CIVD. So uh, CIVD kit, thank you. Okay, so this is more a question for me. So uh, let me explain you basically the process about uh, OncoDNA when you want us to, uh, to do an analysis for you is that we, um, we have those CIVD mark kits that uh, can be shipped out to the customer. And you, or what you have to provide us with is either a solid biopsy, an FFP block, or a blood sample. It's really depending on the solution you would like to go forward with. And based on that, you can ship uh, the uh, CIVD kit back to us, and we will perform all the analysis uh, in-house, okay? So we'll do the uh, NGS testing, um, um, IHC, and whatever molecular tests are required. And then we'll, of course, proceed with the bioinformatics, which is the interpretation, which is actually the most important part uh, of, the, of the solution. So this is basically the process. And then the report actually is given back, is delivered to the customer online on the platform, which is easily accessible. Um, and, you know, the report is really um, delivered in an integrative, uh, interactive way. So, uh, yes, that, that would be the, the basic process uh, when you would like to order an analysis from us. But if you have any more questions, you can just live with, you can just live with me, no problem. Um, okay, second question from Wei Bao. Um, in NCCN guideline, doctor, uh, targeted therapy for EGFR, ALK, Rosran, BRAF uh, mutations. Uh, so what gene we need to be sequenced? Only those is enough for evaluating the benefit of treatment? Uh, yeah, it's a very uh, interesting question. Uh, of course, um, uh, of course, uh, EGFR, ALK, ROS1, and BRAF are the, the mutation uh, uh, that we have the drugs. So we, we call them uh, drugable mutation. But uh, if we the more we test, the more we uh, will have the uh, genetic alteration. And if the one patient don't have these uh, drugable mutation, and we find any uh, other mutation, um, we can look for the treatment in the medical literature. In, in some case, uh, we, will, uh, we will have um, another uh, a treatment for which is approved for renal uh, cancer, for kidney cancer, or otherwise uh, um, for another cancer. Let me tell you uh, the, the, the story about BRAF mutation. Uh, BRAF mutation was firstly identified in melanoma, and the treatment for melanoma, uh, drug apinib and tramitinib, uh, has not been approved for lung cancer for a long, long time, but uh, it approved for melanoma a long time ago. Uh, in the in the recent year, uh, only after the clinical trial with BRAF mutation, we can prove that the treatment for melanoma can be used in lung cancer too. So uh, in case your patient have uh, a newly identified uh, um, mutation, we could look for uh, the treatment in, in another Type of tumor, yeah. Okay, good. 
Um, next question is from Catherine. Um, so how about the financial aspects of oncodna tests? Uh, do patients uh, get reimbursement of some kind for the test? Is this the cost of such tests by oncodna blocking patients from accessing it them? Uh, what can their physician, physician do? Uh, what is the question addressed already at the public health level? Okay, uh, again, so it's a really uh, interesting question, Catherine. Thank, thank you. Um, indeed, you're right. So, you know, uh, NGS um, technology and molecular profiling in cancer in general, it's a pretty new technology. And so, so far, uh, reimbursement occurs, uh, but it's from private insurances and it's uh, or most likely on a case by case basis for now. So this, uh, the, the case I know, of course, the best is OncoDNA. And in, at OncoDNA, actually, we are being reimbursed uh, by several uh, insurances uh, in some countries. Okay, to give you further some example, uh, in UK, uh, we do have a group of insurance company covering us for our tests. And uh, they're covering, actually, uh, the whole portfolio of tests we're offering. Um, in Malaysia, we do have also the reimbursement by a local insurance companies. Uh, in Spain also, um, in um, uh, South America, if I'm not mistaken, and in South Africa, actually we're moving uh, into discussion with local medical aids that already have reimbursed our solution. Um, so we, we know that that kind of technology is the future and would be more and more mainstream but as for now we need indeed those actors um, those medical insurances for us to help us speed the process of uh, expanding that kind of solution and help further more and more patients um, i'm not sure about the, the the case of france but uh, i'm pretty sure we now reimburse there but uh, you know if you have any question just just let me know after the the, um, the webinar and i can discuss with you further about that okay and um okay is um question for you doctor uh, is ngs technology applied in diagnosing lung cancer mutations in vietnam uh, because i see there are many mutations for lung cancer so. Yes, um, um, every time uh, I have a, a patient that are resistant to the uh, to, to the uh, treatment, uh, I usually look for another solution, and uh, that's why I need the NGS. Uh, uh, we we need the more information about uh, mutation, more information about. Uh, um, the immunotherapy response. Uh, so um, we, uh, uh, as uh, Onco DNA has uh, established a representative office in Ho Chi Minh City, uh, I think uh, about two years ago, we usually uh, send our uh, patient sample to them. But actually, uh, we have uh, more company, and uh, even the uh, the cancer hospital in Ho Chi Minh City, they will develop uh, a lab uh, for it in, uh, I think, in next year. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, so the, the next question is from Matthew, uh, Dr. Vu. What would be for you the you know typical clinical settings uh, where you would use one of Oncodini solutions? Yeah, the yeah usually uh, when a new patient come with uh, lung cancer, we usually biopsy them. We do GFR, ALK, uh, PDO1. Uh, the most common uh, um, biomarker, uh, and then uh, we treat them. Uh, after that, when uh, uh, the patient does, does not respond to the treatment, we will have to look for another solution. In this case, we will discuss if we use uh, the OCO DNA solution. Yeah. 
Okay, cool. Um, question from Ricardo. Uh, does OncoDNA immunoscore incorporate Keras TP53 co-mutation? Um, so TP53 for sure uh, is involved in the, in the immunogram. Um, for Keras, um, pretty sure it is not. No. It's not, it's not. I uh, just need to, to double check on that. But uh, for the immunogram, you know, you know, in general, um, patients with strong drivers such as Keras uh, have uh, tend to respond less well to to immuno. Uh, but indeed, we do not uh, incorporate uh, Keras uh, in this case. Only TP53. But, but again, doctor, if uh, if you would like additional uh, explanation about that, you know, you can send me an email, and we we will we we'll give you a more uh, in depth explanation about it. Yeah, I will ask uh, just on command. Uh, you know that uh, as immunotherapy is a uh, very uh, a very young uh, um, uh, treatment, uh, we don't have. Um, uh, so we, we we need more time to identify the the uh, the biomarker for immunotherapy. Uh, TP53 is a, a good biomarker, and in the past uh, people usually say about KRAS as uh, if you have KRAS you will not respond to if you have PTI or if you don't have KRAS and uh, respond to if you have in the KRI, yeah, but uh, actually we don't have many um, data with KRAS and immunotherapy response. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, let's move on to the next question. Um, so it's regarding the immunogram. So the area in the immunogram for prediction, uh, for predicting the response, the response to immunotherapy uh, is small uh, in the in the example you gave us, um, and so does that mean that the response to immunotherapy will be uh, less effective for that patient? Um, so, is is that you know first is that you have the, the guideline level is that we do not uh, recommend to go against the guidelines. So in this case, as you know, PDL one. Uh, and uh, MSI are, most, the, are both biomarkers that have been approved uh, by the FDA. Um, so those biomarkers, if they are uh, assessed positive, actually you can go for uh, immunotherapy. And actually um, it's more of a matter of number of tests that come up positive rather than the, uh, the area on the immunogram. So let's say you have PDA one positive and CD8 expression positive, then you really, you, you're you probably good to go uh, and immunotherapy is a good fit for you. Um, however, if pd one is negative, MSI negative, and then you have some mutation of resistance uh, of uh, sensitivity, for example, to immuno and CD8 positive, then, you know, immunotherapy might not be as that good for you, but according to the guidelines, for us, you still have two tests out of five that came out uh, positive for immunotherapy. So it's really a matter of, uh, is it in your country, is it um, how, how, what freedom of move do you have, if, if you like? Are you really, do you have to stick with the guidelines or can you um, find the best treatment for the patient according to your own findings and potentially the findings OncoDNA, OncoDNA can uh, provide you with? Uh, uh, I can add more comment to this question. Um, you know, uh, targeted therapy have uh, lower uh, side effects and immunotherapy, immunotherapy too. So, uh, we, um, for, for chemotherapy, uh, the treatment is, uh, um, has a lot of side effects. So that's why uh, 
I, I think that uh, in case I can uh, uh, do uh, the more biomarker uh, for, for identifying the patient who can use either targeted therapy or either uh, immunotherapy. So to me, it's important to do biomarker to identify the, the patient who, who, are, who, who is likely to respond to either targeted therapy or um, immunotherapy. Okay, so um, yeah, a lot of questions today, doctor. So another question for you is which patient can get treated with PDL1 therapy, can you explain more about the guidelines for using PDL1 inhibitor? Uh, yeah, actually, as um, targeted therapy ha uh, have a high uh, um, response rate, uh, so if patients have uh, ECFR or ALK, the patient should have uh, ECFR TKI or ALK TKI. Uh, in case the patient are negative for ECFR and TKI, and the patient have PD1 testing, and that uh, the score of PD1 is uh, bigger than 50%, uh, we will use uh, PD1. PD1 inhibitor such as pembrolizumab first line uh, along uh, every three weeks, uh, and then if uh, the patient um, have uh, PD1 less than fifty percent, we can use either chemotherapy alone or chemotherapy uh, with Bevacizumab of chemotherapy with uh, PD1 inhibitors. Uh, in case you want to use uh, uh, immunotherapy, you can combine pembrolizumab and chemotherapy. Um, actually, we don't have many studies which tell uh, chemo plus uh, immunotherapy uh, is. Uh, better or worse than chemo plus um, bevacizumab. Uh, so we should uh, wait for the data for in, in, in the future, yeah. All right. Um, so, and the, so the last question for today is, for, is from Su Chen. And um, uh, it's asking, is it, isn't, isn't you, the, is the use of the OncoDNA immunogram outside of FDA approval uh, and outside of approved clinical trial, what evidence present to support use of OncoDNA immunogram? So, um, so Chen, indeed, so immunogram uh, is not FDA approved, that's for sure. However, it is uh, taking into account um, FDA approved uh, biomarkers as well as others that have proven um, uh, useful use, uh, if you like, in uh, immunotherapy response prediction. And of course, uh, as I said earlier, we will always take into account FDA uh, guidelines when it comes to immunotherapy response uh, prediction. So as I said, if the patient is PDA1 uh, positive, of course, we will advise uh, chemotherapy as uh, a potential uh, treatment with clinical benefit, that's for sure. Um, as, as for now, we're running internally um, several uh, studies uh, the, uh, about immunotherapy, and uh, actually the results uh, could be coming uh, in the, in, no, I wouldn't say anytime soon, but uh, it's uh, we're working on it. So we have many uh, research uh, studies with pharma companies, uh, with local and institutions, uh, local hospitals worldwide uh, to study the, um, the effect of the immunogram on the prediction uh, response to immunotherapy. Okay, so um, yeah. So I think uh, it's time to wrap up. So if, should you have uh, any 
question, my contact details are here. Do not hesitate also uh, to go uh, on to go have a look on the website. And uh, yeah, uh, the the next webinar we will give you the information about the next webinar uh, in the near future. So we'll keep you posted. Thank you very much to everyone. Thank you very much to you, Dr. Wu. And um, yeah, we'll be in touch. So thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Mark, and thank everyone. For